This is the Getting Into Alignment podcast. Here we play in the quantum world of possibilities. If you desire it, you get to have it. My name is Alexa Ray Smith. I'm a business coach and spiritual teacher for women in business. I'm here to help you unlock your personal power and tap into your magnetism so that you can manifest the most incredible life for yourself and build the business of your dreams. These episodes will help you plug into the energy of infinite potentiality and teach you the tools you need to play in this world where limitations don't exist. On this podcast, I'll be talking to you about energetics, mindset, embodiment, spirituality, money, and business. Everything that you want is on the other side of you getting into alignment. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Getting Into Alignment podcast. I'm your host, Alexa Ray Smith. And today's episode, I don't even know, y'all. I have had so many downloads that have come through about what I should talk about today and should, like, I have to talk about something. I don't have to, but I just felt very called to record a podcast today. And, you know, I was working and doing other things. And that's why I love not having a podcast schedule because, As a manifesting generator, I feel so boxed in when I force my creativity. There is something to be said about creating content and creating videos because for me, I just, I I have a defined throat in human design. So for me, like my power is in my voice. And I know y'all know that because when I speak, like sometimes I'm even like, oh my God, I said that. So instead of trying to like force a topic for me to talk about, because the first one was going to be like the first topic that came through was while I was on my walk with the girls today. And I was like, you know what? Let me talk about my micro dosing and the fact that I've been micro dosing a lot lately. And like, let me talk about the lessons that came through. And if you've been here for the whole podcast journey, you know, when I first started, I thought I had to have it like all scripted out and I needed to like have like a a spreadsheet of like, not a spreadsheet, but like had to have a note of what I was going to talk about. And like, so then it was like, oh, so I need to like come up with my 10 biggest lessons from microdosing. And then I was like, oh, what are my 10 biggest lessons? Oh, I, I, I don't know. And that felt like pressure. It felt like constricting my energy. And I was like, that's not it. Like, that's not the vibe. And today is one of the days that I am microdosing. If you're on my email list, I did send you an email of, you know, updating you guys. And if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you've seen on my stories that I was really called. I want to say two months ago, a month ago, like what is time? But I was really called to start microdosing again. And it was something that when I had first moved to the South, I was really really doing a lot of. And when I say a lot, I mean, I was doing it more days. So you're not supposed to microdose every single day. Like it's supposed to be like four days on and then two days off. Anyone that microdoses or takes anything, any, every single day, I, I would be very hesitant to actually take their advice. And of course, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor or physician, but That is how you are meant to do it. You cannot abuse the medicine. And if I'm being fully honest, I actually moved away from microdosing because I witnessed a lot of people here specifically abusing the medicine. And that that's not right. And it's not what is actually going to help you transcend and help you actually be able to meet yourself. And so I guess this one's going to be more like a fucking dear diary. So here we go. So if you know my journey, I was diagnosed with celiacs when I was 22 years old and I was at toxic gluten levels when that happened. Like they honestly didn't know how I was alive. And that's how I went on my wellness journey, which 
I already was on a spiritual awakening journey. And then, because that happened at 17, my first spiritual awakening. And then my wellness journey really like took hold. And that's when I started discovering the gut health brain connection and realizing how most mental illnesses are really caused by having crappy gut health. Like I always say, if you have crappy gut health, you're going to have crappy mental health. And I really don't think that our society puts enough emphasis on gut health and even just nutrition in general, because doctors in America only take a nutrition 101 class and the rest of the time they are taught how to prescribe you medicine and how to cut you open, which is a system based on disease, not health, right? And I, it's been coming out a lot on my lives lately where I've been coaching and mentoring and answering questions and it ends up where I go on like a little tangent about health. And I just feel like I'm so passionate about it because I know that if I had not gone through my wellness journey and realized on my own and started to do the research to really become my own healer and like my own medicine woman, then I would still be suffering from such terrible mental diseases and like and by that I mean I had the worst panic disorder that you could be diagnosed with. I was on the most amount of anxiety medicine that they could prescribe anyone. I was suicidal the majority of my life. I had the worst, the worst depression that you could ever have, like clinical depression. And I had, you know, I tried all the medicines and they never actually helped me. And what I real and like I actually started doing and experimenting with plant medicine when I was 16 years old. And that is when I real like I always knew intuitively that the system was broken and I never bought into what we were sold. Like I never bought into the American dream. I never bought into having like one career. I never bought into the very, very closed off teachings that we were taught in church or in my small, predominantly white Republican hometown. Like I always was very progressive and I was always very wise for my age, but I believe that you had to be straight edge. Well, so let me back up. So in my family, what I had personally witnessed was you were either straight edge and you didn't do drugs and you like barely drank and you were successful and you had a good life to show for it because you had the money and the means to pay for the things that you needed and as well as the things that you wanted. And then I also witnessed that if you did drugs and you did alcohol, that you struggled with money and that you struggled with success and you really just struggled a lot. Like, and I always knew that I didn't want to struggle like that. So I always wanted to have money because I didn't want to struggle. I didn't want to have to choose between what I needed and what I wanted. I just wanted to be able to have this peace of mind and this calmness about me that I could afford anything that I wanted. And so I was very adamant and I was very straight edge and I was totally against drugs. And then when I was 16 years old, my friend said, I've never met anybody who has as many stomach issues as you that doesn't smoke weed. And I was like, what do you mean? Like truly to me, I had never even heard that. Now he had two older brothers and they lived in California and California has always been way more advanced when it comes to plant medicines and, you know, just advanced when it comes to I would say breaking free from typical Western ideals. And to me, I never even heard that cannabis could be med medicinal. Like I just was always taught that it was a gateway drug. And I, when he told me that it could be used for medicinal purposes and specifically when you had stomach issues. And again, this is when I was 16, I was not diagnosed with my celiacs. I just like had this moment like, wait, what? 
Like I've been completely fucking lied to you so much so that what I have witnessed with my own eyes has also been filtered through the lens of lies. And I just like, I don't even know. It just, it really struck a nerve in me. And he was like, I think you should just try it. And again, this is not medical advice. This is not condoning drugs, but this is just my story, right? So I literally took one hit of cannabis. And the second that I exhaled, I said, that was all I had to do. That was it. And it was the first time in my entire life that I breathed without being in pain. Like it, people used to always ask me, what does it feel like? And I would say, it feels like you have cement in your internal organs and it's hardening. And so you just have like this density in you and it hurts to move, it hurts to breathe, it hurts to be alive. And so of course that is going to cause a lot of mental illnesses because I, and I didn't know this, right? That I was at like toxic gluten levels because I was eating gluten and everything. And I had always wanted to be healthier. So I was eating wheat based things when more healthier, when healthier alternatives came out. And so of course, like I was at toxic levels when I got diagnosed. But so I went from being straight edge to being like, are you fucking kidding me? Like I have gone to the doctor and complained of symptoms for as long as I can remember, like from five years old, I can remember having symptoms that if you look at celiac, celiac disease, they all correlate back to it. And I was like, this whole medical system is a joke. Like what a joke. I've been in pain my entire life and I've been programmed to believe that a plant, which Ha the only negative side effect it has is memory loss when every other medicine in the world has like 10,000 times more negative interactions and like it just causes so many more symptoms that are adverse. And so anyway, I really then just, I went off the deep end and I experimented with a lot of drugs and I, you know, and I experimented with hallucinogenics and I, you know, I went deep, I went deep and I actually end up calling it my drug decade. I, uh, I would say that I kind of went like Hunter S Thompson style, like fear and loathing in Las Vegas, not that bad, but like, I would say that I always used to joke, but in all honesty, I always used to say, I'm going to write a book about my life and I'm going to have to title it as a fiction book because no one's going to believe that it actually happened to me. And while I'm not going to go into the drug decade in detail on this podcast, because oh, it would need a whole book <laughs> anyway. And so there was a period of time from in that decade where I, you know, got addicted to hard drugs, got off of them. But the one that always maintained in my life since 16 was cannabis because medicinally it was the only way I could eat. It was the only way I could feel okay. It was the only way that my stomach was not like completely tanking my energy levels. And so I'm 34 at the time of recording this. So since I was 16 years old, minus when I have been out of the country and couldn't actually get my hands on any cannabis, I have, I have smoked cannabis every single day. And, you know, there was something to be said at the beginning, like I wasn't diagnosed for years after I started. So I really did actually need it because of the amount of pain that I was in. But then over the past few years, as I've been going through my spiritual awakening journey, since I've been meditating deeper, since I've been meditating for longer, since I've been channeling more, since I've been really, really deeply, deeply going through my spiritual ascension, I kept hearing this message that you need to stop smoking and stop using cannabis. And I'll be honest with you, it wasn't even like from an addictive point of view that I was like, oh my God, I can't stop doing this. It was from a, a fear of like remembering how much pain I was in. 
And I just didn't want to feel like that. Like I felt like that for, for 22 years of my life. And it was like, I just don't want to go back to being in that much pain, like ever. And I had every time, honestly, I fought it and I was like, no, like, I need to be able to breathe. I need to be able to eat. I need to be able to function. And so I I honestly wouldn't even entertain it. And I would get a little frustrated when these messages kept coming through or when I would be listening to something, a channeling that I found really profound. And then somebody would ask the question about cannabis. And, and specifically... The biggest one was in the Law of One teachings. That's my favorite book by Ra. And I always tell people it's a very, very advanced book. I truly don't think that most people could even handle or comprehend it or get down with it. But he said that it causes holes in, and these holes prevent you from being able to really fully ascend. And that all, like, that landed with me. And I was like, oh boy. So I knew that I was going to be getting to the point where I was no longer going to be utilizing cannabis anymore, but I was honestly scared shitless. I really, really was because the thing that isn't talked about a lot is that cannabis is not an easy drug to stop doing. It's actually very, very difficult. And I, I always used to also joke that I would write a book, how to quit anything from coffee to heroin because I've done it all. And, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. Quitting cannabis was really, really fucking hard. Like there's a lot of symptoms and your sleep gets really, really fucked up. Like your insomnia comes back full force. It's you're because you haven't been dreaming at the level that you normally dream at. Your dreams get intense and the, the whole eating thing, like I already have like a stomach condition. So it's like, then your eating isn't as easy and you know, all these things. So earlier this year, I tried it and, and, uh, and it brings out a lot of agitation. And especially as a manifesting generator, I always say that our not self theme is frustration, but because we take on aspects of the manifestors and their not self theme is anger that we get frustrated and then we go into anger very quickly. And every single manifesting generator I've ever done a human design reading for has, has agreed with that. And I think you really have to be a manifesting generator to understand and get that. But so there's been a lot of agitation. It's, it's, there's been like bouts of anger. And I tried a few months back. Honestly, it might have even been like a year ago now. And it was, it was really difficult. I went through like a really deep depression and I ended up going back to it because I just, I like couldn't live. Like it just, it was so hard to live trying to be without it. And then recently I was getting called again to stop smoking. One of the main reasons, because I truly don't think I want to live in America anymore. I've always said this since I was 16 years old. I've always said this, but I don't know this country. Like I just saw something the other day, how it's now a third world country. And I just can't believe that it's taken this long for people to realize it's a third world country. Women don't have rights to our bodies. The healthcare system is a for-profit system. We have poison in our water. There's places that don't have water. 80% of Americans can't handle a $400 emergency. The cost of living typically exceeds the amount of money that we're making. And you know, we, you can manifest the money, you can, all the things, but it's just like, do I really want to live in such a hateful nation that I, you know, you guys know that I believe that we are breaking down all these paradigms. So that way we can become better and create this new 5d consciousness. But to me, it's just like, especially because I spent eight years working for the government, it's just like heavy. And I just don't know if I want to be here anymore, if I'm being fully honest. So since I was looking, you guys, I can't even make this shit up as I'm recording this. I just got a canvas letter for the state of New York asking me to work for them. That's unfucking real. Oh my God. Anyway, 
So it was like, if I leave America and I go to another country, I wouldn't be able to get cannabis because most other countries don't even have it legalized. So it was like, I'm I'm really serious about this. Like I'm really, really serious about moving out of the South specifically and moving out of America. So I've been, I've been doing it and I'm not going to lie. Like it hasn't been easy, but one thing that came up, I don't even remember where I saw this, but it was like, you know, mushrooms can be really helpful in overcoming other addictions. And I was like, oh, okay. And I think that's why I was so called to get back onto the microdosing kick because it's helping me to be able to transition smoothly from being somebody who utilized cannabis for medicinal purposes. Like it wasn't like I was abusing it or anything. I hardly even smoked, you know, towards the end of it, I was only smoking like maybe a joint a day, if that, like a bowl a day. But anyway, like this must be why I could not come up with like a, what I wanted to talk about today because the divine was just going to take over and I was just going to start spilling my guts. So <laughs> here we are. But anyway, so I have been microdosing to, well, to learn like the lessons and to heal and all the things and to meet myself deeper and to be able to get my body through this period. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Honestly, when I quit smoking cigarettes, I ate chocolate, (laughs) like to quit smoking cigarettes. And then when I got to the point where I gained 15 pounds because I ate too much chocolate, I was like, okay, now I got to cut the chocolate out. But it helped me. And I think that a lot of the times it's really good to have a bridge when you are transitioning. So if you're somebody that's been wanting to quit anything, well, you're in the right place because I can help you with that. But I just want to let you know that It's not always easy, but it's always going to be worth it. And one of the biggest lessons that has been coming through while microdosing is the fact that it's really been teaching me how to love because love is something that if I'm being fully honest with you, well, I guess I am in this episode of my diary (laughs) that I I remembered feeling love when I was like up to like five years old, but then I did not feel love like from myself, from my family. Love was not something that I felt. Unconditional love was not something I ever knew. I didn't grow up in a family that told me that I was loved. I didn't hear, I love you. I didn't, I wasn't like raised where I got hugs. I wasn't raised in a family that said that they were proud of you. I like my household wasn't like that. They would buy you things because they weren't able to communicate emotionally or connect with you emotionally. So love was something that I just like, I guess I didn't realize how much that had really still been a wound that I was carrying. And I talk about all the time how your your heart is the biggest electromagnetic force field and your feelings plus your mindset is really what's creating your vibration. So it's like I got to a level where I felt like I I really couldn't ascend any further because my heart like sh- my heart chakra needed some healing, like a lot of fucking healing. And Oh God, like, here we go. I'm just pouring it all out for you guys. And so right now I'm coming up on like a week shy of my boyfriend who I lived with died. And that like really, really, that was the one death that I wasn't able to process. If you know me, like I process death better than anyone, anyone that I know that like that I've ever met because the people that I love started dying at a very young age. And so like death was just something that I realized was a part of life. And I saw that if you were able to deal with death, you could live a happy life. But the people in my life that can't process death, they are the ones that suffer a lot of mental illnesses, especially depression. And I was like, I'm not going to be somebody that gets taken out every time somebody dies because it's just the only part of life that's guaranteed. But when he died, because it was so unexpected, 
I, and like I lived with him. And so it was like, I, I dropped him off in the morning. I got a phone call on my break that he was dying and I called his parents to let him know that they needed to get to him. And then by the time I got out of work, he was dead and I had to go home to our house and the bed that like the night before we both slept in. And that really, really fucked with me. And I guess that I thought by now that I had fully processed that. But with the medicine lately, <clears throat> I've been realizing that I don't think that I fully processed it. It was that I just like buried it. And that was when I like really, really closed off my heart. And I stopped letting love in. I stopped giving myself love. I stopped allowing other people to love me. And I've realized recently that I just, I can't ascend further if I'm not loving. And granted, I've done a lot of work to love myself since then. So I'm not going to say that I haven't been loving myself at all, but I realized that Love is the thing, like that's my biggest, that's the biggest lesson that I have taken from this mushroom medicine is that I really need to do, and I've been doing, but like it was love and being able to really tap into the frequency of love and feel what it feels like to actually be loved and to allow love in. So I want to read you a download that came through to me last night about love that I feel like is so powerful. And I posted it on my Instagram, but I just want to reiterate it here. And it's when you are here to learn love, you will be, const you will be given constant opportunities to become it, to love those who hurt you, to love yourself when you have fallen out of character, to know that you are love that it cannot be lost. It is who you are. Let the walls down. Drop your guard. Let the love in. Let the love pour out. Remember who you are. And I know that that message was for me, and I know that it was for the collective as well. So I don't know. Like, <laughs> like normally I'm teaching on these. Normally there's like a profound lesson that I'm teaching but I think today I'm just like opening up more and sharing with you because I think for so long it was like, how can I share my life in a way where it was like, let's put a positive spin on it. Because if we're being honest, like I've been through more trauma than any motherfucker I know, like truly since the beginning of the beginning. And I think sometimes when we start doing the spiritual work and when we have our spiritual awakening and we start exploring this new world, I think sometimes because we've been so traumatized and because we've been so hurt in our past that we close our heart off and we start living more in our head because even though our mind can have a lot of drama and cause a lot of pain. It just hits different than pain in the heart, like genuine heartache. And I feel like a lot of us have been disappointed by life and disappointed by what we've been through. And what, especially when you see other people that didn't go through these things and it's like, why the hell do I have to keep going through this? Like, well, why, why do I have to keep meeting myself in these depths and in this darkness? And I know, like, I, <clears throat> I don't know that I've said this on the podcast or not yet, but I know my journey has been much of a shaman's journey where it was like, I had to go through the darkness and go through the pain. So that way I could really help lead others. So one thing I've been learning to do now is to, really find love and compassion for myself, 
for my past, for what I've been through and not looking at it like with such a negative connotation, but realizing that if I had come from a family where I was, where I always felt loved and I felt super connected, then I honestly don't think that I would have started to do this work. I really don't. I don't think I would have been able to share as vulnerably as I do. I don't think I would have been able to have a global reach. Like my clients and my students are global. I like, it's not just Americans that I work with. And I just truly don't think I would have had that strength and that independence. Like I always wanted to have this really super close relationship with my mother and have this like loving relationship where she's your best friend, like Gilmore Girls style, right? And it was like, that is not what I will ever have in this lifetime. And I used to think that that was a curse. And I now see it as a gift because it's like, because I have never had that and will never have that, I actually can travel without missing anyone. I can travel without being alone. Like I truly can honestly say that I don't miss people. I, I really enjoy my my aloneness and in quite honesty, feeling with my family has always felt really dense and really heavy. And it, I never felt happy after leaving my family. Like happiness is not what I feel. I feel very, very drained And I'm realizing that this is what has given me so much strength and allowed me to come home to my power because I can go anywhere in the world. And as long as I have my dogs with me, like I'll be good. But there's no one person that it's like, if they died, if I lose them, like my life would be shattered. Like I'm good. I'm good. And while that's important and needed, that independence has allowed me to really block off my heart even more because it was like, I don't need people, but we all kind of do need people, right? So I guess the biggest lesson, if we have to like put a bow on it and give you like something to walk away with, I don't even know how long I've been speaking now because The last thing I was doing was creating music on this app that I record on. So it's still in beats and bars. So I have no freaking idea how long I've been spilling my guts to y'all. But I just want to, I just want to say like, what have you been looking at in your life as a curse when really it was your biggest gift? Like, What lessons did you go through? What experiences did you go through? What hurt did you go through? That it wasn't happening to you, it was happening for you. Like, who did you become because of it? Who are you able to be because of it? Because if I had a happy little little old life in small town, country, (laughs) upstate New York, then I probably would have never left like half my family, I'd still be there. And that to me is like the most depressing thing in the world to be born in one place and live there forever, like without actually experiencing the world. And I'm now just so grateful that I went through everything that I did. And I do mean everything, like even the very, 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 very extremely hard and painful things, because looking back on it, I became the woman that I am today because of that. I'm able to help people all over the world because of the woman that I've become, because of the amount of time I've spent in the depths of my shadows doing the shadow work. And no, it's not inner child healing. That's a, that's definitely another podcast episode for another day, but like doing all of this work and really prioritizing my mental health and my physical health and my well-being and closing myself off and being okay to be a hermit so that way I could keep ascending and keep growing without being attached to anyone or anything. And non-attachment is something that they teach you in Buddhism that 
is truly so, so profound. And in manifestation and in business, non-attachment is essential. The more attached you come, you become to the manifestation, the more attached you become to the business growth, the more opportunities the universe is going to give you to become unattached to them. So I want to ask you, what are you attached to? Like truly, what are you attached to right now? And how can you start working through that through a lens of truly experiencing non-attachment so that way you can know yourself fully because in order to meet yourself at the deepest level in your psyche, you have to do it by yourself. It isn't something that someone else can facilitate for you. You truly have to meet yourself at the edges, in the darkness, and learn how to send love and light to those areas. And the more that we are attached to anything, the deeper the lesson of unattachment and non-attachment becomes. So... I don't know, just like let that one sit with you. This this one isn't a normal podcast episode. I don't normally spill my heart and soul out. And it's not even like, oh, well, you're microdosing. Like this isn't normally what comes through. It's just these are the lessons that I have been working through. This is, you know, a little background on me. I don't always share a lot about like my personal life. I give you guys insights and I give you perspectives and I show you like what I do throughout my day, but I don't actually share as much about my journey. And I don't know, I would say because I've been writing this book, like it, I don't think I've mentioned it on the podcast, but I've been writing a book, I've been writing a book about manifestation. I'm going to also write a book about spirituality and I'll eventually write that book about my life, but it's all just been like coming up because I really... I really believe that when you go into the process of writing a book, it's going to surface everything. Like everything's going to come to the surface. Even if it has no relevance to the topic of the book, it just, there's a lot of introspection that occurs because it's like, what do I have to say? What am I giving to the world? Like, what have I been through so that I can teach this? Like, what are what are the words that are coming through me? And I don't know. So I think a lot of this has been honestly the book writing process and the journey that I've been going through. But yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to leave this one here just because there was a lot in this one. But let me know, like, did this one land with you? Do you guys want me to share more about my life and what I've been through and like what I'm like actually working through behind the scenes or do we like the little like tidbits of plugging in and teaching so that way we're like growing on our own. I don't know. This one's a different, more vulnerable share, but I think that that's part of me bringing my heart back online and being able to share, like genuinely share whether it might get me labeled in a certain way or, you know, like whatever projections will come my way. I've been doing so much fucking shadow work. Like someone's projection can't even like, it's like a shield of honor. It just it ding bounces right back off me. So I'm, I'm honestly not even worried about it, but I am genuinely, genuinely curious how this one landed for you. What your biggest takeaway was. If you want me to keep sharing like this, like, let me know reach out to me via Instagram, reach out to me via TikTok. If, uh, if you've been wanting to get into my world, I've got so many different ways that you can work with me. I've got so many different programs that you can get into. You can get into my academy. I just say, go to my website, like all of the things are there. But if you have any questions, you can always DM me and I'd be happy to support you along this journey because sometimes we do need support because it's not an easy one. If you're a healer, if you're a guide, if you're a mentor, if you're a light worker, if you're someone who's been through the depths 
of the darkness and is emerging into the light. I just want you to understand that like, not only do I get it, not only do I empathize, like I am you. I've been there through so many things that I won't even, wouldn't even be able to share them in one podcast episode. But sometimes I think we see people that create content and have businesses and they just seem so confident and they seem like they just have it all together. And it's like, yes, and they're also a human. Like they've also been through things. They're also working through things. And I think more of me, you know, embracing this spiritual teacher and less of like the coach archetype that I had put myself into and the industry that I'd put myself into. I think that the women that I, not even I think, I know that the women that I am resonating with now are the ones that are being way more vulnerable about the human behind the business. And so, yeah, this is the human behind the business. All right, I love you guys so much. Thank you genuinely from the bottom of my heart for being here because... This one was, this one was a big share. All right. I'll talk to you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you're ready to go deeper and to get into my world, you can go to my website, alexaraysmith.com. You'll find all of my current programs on there. If you're desiring to get mentored by me, then the best thing to do is shoot me a DM on Instagram and we can talk about mentorship options and which one's the best fit for you. If you're absolutely loving this podcast, please go rate it five stars and let me know why you're loving it. This will help me share the podcast with more people. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. And until the next episode, keep manifesting the most incredible life.